Thank you. Thanks, Pete. Thanks, Ganesh. Um, I'll start tonight with uh, a, a high-level vision of our system that will that will help set the stage for the, the challenges and the problems we're solving. And then also how software will then leverage this for performance. Now, our vision for Dojo is to build a single unified accelerator, a very large one. Software would see a seamless compute plane with globally addressable, very fast memory, and all connected together with uniform high bandwidth and low latency. Now, to realize this, we, we need to use density to achieve performance. Now, we leverage technology to get this density in order to break levels of hierarchy all the way from the chip to the scale-out systems. Now, silicon technology has, has, used this, has done this for decades. Uh, chips have followed Moore's law to, for density and integration to get perf uh, performance scaling. Now, a key step in realizing that vision was our training tile. Not only can we integrate 25 dies at extremely high bandwidth, but we can scale that to any number of additional tiles by just connecting them together. Now, last year, we showcased our first functional training tile. And at that time, we already had workloads running on it. And since then, the team here has been working hard and diligently to deploy this at scale. Now, we've made amazing progress and had a lot of milestones along the way. And of course, we've had a lot of unexpected challenges. But this is where our fail fast philosophy has allowed us to push our boundaries. Now, pushing density for performance presents all new challenges. One area is power delivery. Here, we need to deliver the power to our compute die, and this directly impacts our top-line compute performance. But we need to do this at unprecedented density. We need to be able to match our die pitch with a power density of almost one amp per millimeter squared. And because of the extreme integration, this needs to be a multi-tiered vertical power solution. And because there's a complex heterogeneous material stack up, we have to carefully manage the material transition, especially CTE. Now, why does the coefficient of thermal expansion matter in this case? CTE is a fundamental material property. And if it's not carefully managed, that stack up would literally rip itself apart. So we started this effort by working with vendors to, deliver, to, to develop this power solution but we realized that we actually had to develop this in-house. Now, to balance schedule and risk, we built quick iterations to support both our system bring up and software development, and also to find the optimal design and stack up that would meet our final production goals. And in the end, we were able to reduce CTE over 50% and meet our performance by 3x over, over our initial version. Now, needless to say, finding this optimal material stack up while maximizing performance at density is extremely difficult. Now, we did have unexpected challenges along the way. Here's an example where we pushed the boundaries of integration that led to component failures. This started when we scaled up to larger and longer workloads, and then intermittent, intermittently, a single site on a tile would fail. Now, they started out as recoverable failures, but as we pushed to much higher and higher power, these would become permanent failures. Now, to understand this failure, you have to understand why and how we build our power modules. Solving density at every level is the, is, is the cornerstone of actually achieving our system performance. <clears throat> now, because our XY plane is used for high bandwidth communication, Everything else must be stacked vertically. This means all other components other than our die must be integrated into our power modules. Now, that includes our clock and our power supplies and also our system controllers. Now, in this case, the failures were due to losing clock output from our oscillators. 
and after an extensive debug, we found that the root cause was due to vibrations on the module from piezoelectric effects on nearby capacitors. Now, singing caps are not a new phenomenon, and in fact, very common in power design. But normally, clock chips are placed in a very quiet area of the board, and often not affected by power circuits. But because we needed to achieve this level of integration, these oscillators need to be placed in very close proximity. Now, due to our switching frequency and then the vibration resonance created, it caused out-of-plane vibration on our MEMS oscillator that caused it to crack. Now, the solution to this problem is a multi-prong approach. We can reduce the vibration by using soft terminal caps. We can update um, uh, our MEMS part with a lower Q factor for the out-of-plane direction. And we can also update our switching frequency to push the resonance further away from these sensitive bands. Now, in addition to the, to the density uh, at the system level, we've been making a lot of progress at the infra infrastructure level. We knew that we had to re-examine every aspect of the data center infrastructure in order to support our unprecedented power and cooling density. We brought in a fully custom designed C CDU to support Dojo's dense cooling requirements. And the amazing part is we're able to do this at a fraction of the cost versus buying off the shelf and modifying it. And since our Dojo cabinet integrates enough power and cooling to match an entire row of standard IT racks, we need to carefully design our cabinet and infrastructure together. And we've already gone through several iterations of this cabinet to optimize this. And earlier this year, we started load testing our power and cooling infrastructure. And we were able to push it over two megawatts before we tripped our substation and got a call from the city. Yeah. Now last year, we introduced only a couple of components of our system the custom D1 die and the training tile, but we teased the Exapod as our end goal. We'll walk through the remaining parts of our system that are required to build out this Exapod. Now the system tray is a key part of realizing our vision of a single accelerator. It enables us to seamless, seamlessly connect tiles together, not only within the cabinet, but between cabinets. We can connect these tiles at very tight spacing across the entire accelerator, and this is how we achieve our uniform communication. This is a laminated bus bar that allows us to integrate very high power, mechanical and thermal support, and an extremely dense integration. It's 75 millimeters in height and, and supports six tiles at 135 kilograms. This is the equivalent of three to four fully loaded high performance racks. Next, we need to feed data to the training tiles. This is where we've developed the Dojo interface processor. It provides our system with high bandwidth DRAM to stage our training data. And it provides full memory bandwidth to our training tiles using TTP, our custom protocol that we use to communicate across our entire accelerator. It also has high-speed Ethernet that helps us extend this custom protocol over standard Ethernet. And we provide native hardware support for this with little to no software overhead. And lastly, we can connect, connect to it through a standard Gen 4 PCIe interface. Now, we pair 20 of these cards per tray, and that gives us 640 gigabytes of high bandwidth DRAM. And this provides our disaggregated memory layer for our training tiles. These cards are our high bandwidth ingest path, both through PCIe and Ethernet. They also provide a high rate X Z connectivity path that allows shortcuts across our large Dojo accelerator. Now we actually integrate the host directly underneath our system tray. These hosts provide our ingest processing and connect to our interface processors through PCIe. These hosts can provide hardware video decoder support for video-based training. And our user applications land on these hosts that, 
we, so we, we can provide them with a standard x86 Linux environment. Now we can put two of these assemblies into one cabinet and pair it with redundant power supplies that do direct conversion of three phase 480 volt AC power to 52 volt DC power. Now by focusing on density at every level, we can realize the vision of a single accelerator. Now starting with the uniform nodes on our custom D1 die, we can connect them together in our fully integrated training tile, and then finally, seamlessly connecting them across cabinet boundaries to form our Dojo accelerator. And altogether, we can house two full accelerators in our Exapod for a combined one exaflop of ML compute. Now, altogether, this amount of technology and integration has only ever been done a couple of times in the history of compute. Next, we'll see how software can leverage this to accelerate their performance.